Well, here I am right before Michael Bumford does the announcements. People all over the world watching it. I'm putting the final Vaseline on Vladimir and we're about this far apart. And he says, you could call me son. I saw him in Germany like three months later. And I said, Vladimir, that one moment, why? He says, Stitch, there's very few people I trust with my life. You are one of them. Man, that gave me chills. Hey, que pasa GQ? This is Stitch Duran here. You've probably seen me in a lot of the epic fights, MMA, kickboxing, boxing, even the movies, Creed 1, 2, 3, Rocky Balboa, play it to the bone, here comes the boom. People always ask me, what's a cut man? Well, very simply is we're here to give that fighter that one more round. During the fight, our job is to maintain any swelling or cuts and minimize all the negative things that could stop a fight. Today, we're gonna talk about some epic cuts and some behind the scenes stories with some of the greatest fighters in the world. Some of the tools that we use in the trade are the swaps. These are the ones that we apply into the adrenaline. Adrenaline chloride 11000 is what we use as a medication. This is a vessel constrictor. So we'll apply that in the cut in theory that it's gonna close up the blood vessels. I always tell these young cut men, use gloves, use the wrist wrap so that you don't put the swab in your mouth or in your ear. It's not the clean, clean way of doing it. And you know, we gotta take care of these kids. Another medication that I use is Quick Aid. It's 100% natural. It's made out of a seaweed base. And what you do is when you put it on the cut, it literally dehydrates the blood. Let's talk about the end swell. Well, this isn't the end swell. It's called the KO swell. My wife named it. When you use an end swell, it's to maintain swelling. All the end swells were always flat. I could never understand this. Guys would do this like they're putting makeup on. It's totally wrong. This I created when I was coming back from London with Kenny Florian, the UFC show. We're at the airport and I get a bottle of water and I put it on my cheek and, and the bottom, it's contoured. So I went home and got some clay made a model and now we got the stitch KO swell. So it's very, very important. Brock Lesnar, one of the great guys that I've worked with, actually requested me to wrap his hands uh, when he first started with the UFC. That was one of the requirements for him. I think he fought Cain Velasquez and ended up with a big old nasty cut. And I go and I put this swab in his cut and it goes all the way to the bone. And he looks at me and says, Stitch, take care of me. I said, yes, you know I will. In a cut like Brock's, it looks bad, but when it comes to the eyes of stopping a fight, they probably won't stop the fight because it's not giving a fighter a disadvantage. Even though the cut or the swab goes into the bone, you know, it's about as deep as it's gonna go, you know. I gotta show you this glove. This is his glove that he ripped when he was gonna fight Shane Carwin. So I'm putting the glove on Brock Lesnar and it rips just like the Hulk. Look at that. I tell Burt Watson, our coordinator, and he said, man, we got to figure something out. And the one Shane's wearing gloves also this size because I only got four pair. So I remember working with Vladimir and Vitaly Klitschko. We would put Vaseline on their wraps and then slide the glove in. And that's what I did for Brock. And that's how he ended up fighting. But uh, I ended up keeping the gloves. Forrest Griffin, you got to love the guy, right? I wrapped his hands every day. The big fight that I had with him was when he fought Shogun. And there was the first UFC fighter with a pride fighter. And every cut you analyze it and then you figure out what are you gonna use for what type of cut. You know, do you use a vessel constrictor? Do you use a coagulant? Something that dehydrates blood like quick aid? You know, so you make those evaluations. And with Forrest, yeah, actually I used all three. You know, I used the adrenaline to try to close as much of the blood vessels as you could, but that's a big vein, so it's continued to bleed. I put the quick aid to try to dehydrate it. And then I kind of filled the gap with avatine. Avatine is a coagulant also. It's like a cotton candy. So I kind of roll it up and just kind of fit it in there and it fit like a glove. Then I covered up with the Vaseline and, and adrenaline mix that I put here to keep it going. He ended up winning the fight. So that was a great moment for me. And of course, great moment for the UFC as well as, uh, as Forrest Griffin. Marvin Eastman, from Merced, California. I'm from Planada, California, so we're close to each other. I know he took a knee from Vitor Belfort. Of course, the doctor stopped the fight, but as I'm working on his cut, literally Joe Rogan says it looked like you flayed a shrimp and it opened it up. But as I'm working on it, I know that the fans are looking at the big screen up there because I hear them going, ooh and ah. And one of my jobs is to see in what position these fighters are in mentally. Can I say fuck? I tell Marvin, I said, Marvin, this is the biggest fucking cut I've ever seen in my life. And he started smiling, but I knew he reacted to what I said, so I knew that he was okay. How do you chew the cut that big? You pray. <laughs> yeah. 
When you look at it, there's a lot of small veins, all right? So it's not gonna bleed that much. It looks a lot worse than it is. And especially when it's down to the bone, it's not gonna go no further. You know, you try to maintain it as much as possible, but yeah, a cut like that, as gnarly as it is, you wanna stop it and save him for another day. Robbie Lawler, number one, the guy's a boxing enthusiast. Every time we get together, we talk boxing. One of the last fights I had with the UFC was when Robbie fought Roy McDonald. And he ended up with a big old lip. Looked like somebody got a knife and just cut his lip. But I remember I was looking at a video, this guy yells at him, don't laugh. And he goes, ah, <laughs> and you see blood just popping out, right? So what I do is I get my wet cloth and I'll pinch and try to get as much of that blood in the little veins out as possible. And then I'll put that adrenaline and I just kind of kind of close his lip like this and try to get in there, but it worked. I saw Robbie the next day, they sewed him up. They did a great job because the cut was straight. It's the ones that are zigzag. That, those are the ones you got to be concerned with. But what a great guy, man. What a war. Him and Rory McDonald. You know, Nate and Nick were, we're all from the 209, you know, so we grew up in that type of environment. I've always wrapped their hands, both Nate and Nick. This fight was in New York. I didn't work that one, uh, but the question was, should the doctor had stopped the fight? And as you look at it, the cuts are big, all right, you know, but we've seen them before, but there's not a disadvantage there. And in New York, you know, uh, I guess that's where they stopped the fight, the people were booing it, but uh, yeah, bottom line is still taking care of the fighters. People say, well, you know, you got scar tissue, cut's gonna open a lot easier. In all fairness, I haven't seen that. To have a cut on that place has to be the exact same shot that you had when you cut that. But once again, you know, I do prepare them for the worst case scenario. John Jones, love working with this guy. You know, fortunately, he was such a great fighter that there wasn't a whole lot of injuries that I had to work on. But he did break his toe, I think, when he fought Tail Sonnet. And the doctor looks at him, the bone's kind of sticking out of his toe. And the doctor says, uh, 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 what are you gonna do, Stitch? You know, so I took it upon myself, I kind of pulled it, and then I taped it. And I don't think John Jones even knew that his toe was broken. John Jones, of course, dominating the division for such a long time, but when he fought right there, that was a tough fight, man. So, you know, when I get in there, I have to look at him eye to eye and assure him that on my part, he's gonna be okay. So go out there and fight and fight as hard as you can. Making eye contact with these fighters is so, so, so important, especially under these circumstances, but once again, letting them know that I'm here to cover your back. And that's what I did with John Jones. So I always did with John Jones. Jay Haran the bloodiest fight I ever worked. And he's so proud for me to mention that. He fought Jonathan Goulet. He took a knee, but the cut came this way and they bled like a pig. They both had so much blood on top of the head to the bottom of their feet that I'm working on Jay and I got nauseated with all the smell of the iron in the blood. And it's never happened before. Dr. Flip Romansky came and says, can you stop the cut? The bleeding, I said, yeah, I cord, no, no problem. You know, try to give him one more round. So I get the mixture of Vaseline and adrenaline and I cover the cut, but it popped out just like the, the dike that you see in the movies, right? The water just spewed out. If you go to Randy Couture's gym, you'll see that ring right there. But Jay Haran, bloodiest fight I ever worked. MMA, the cuts are pretty much down to the bone. You know, when you got knees and you got elbows and the ground and pound, uh, you're gonna get some major cuts. Boxing, bro, I could be eating popcorn and watching the fights at the same time because they don't happen that often. But when they do happen, you gotta be in there and give them that opportunity to win that fight and give them that one more round and make them some money. Vitaly Klitschko, man, I love these guys. Vladimir Vitaly, been with them so many, so many years. But this fight that he had with Lennox Lewis was kind of like a last moment type of thing. Nobody knew who Vitaly was. Joe Souza was a cut man. Ended up with these big, big cuts. Obviously, the doctor stopped the fight, but you know, when I was working with him, he looked at me and said, Stish, if you were with me when I fought Lennox Lewis, I would have won that fight. Vladimir Klitschko, the first time I worked with him, he's fighting Devera Williamson. He comes in in the fifth round, he gets an unintentional headbutt. And that big vein that we have right there, it pops and it starts bleeding. But I knew at that point that Vladimir was winning the fight and I knew he had a cut that was so dangerous that the blood would be getting in his eyes. When he sat down, I told him and Vitaly, I said, look, you're winning the fight, you got a bad cut, I'm gonna have the doctor stop the fight. So when the doctor came, she says, well, what do you think, Stitch? And I go like this, I open it up, I say, yeah, it's pretty bad. She stopped the fight. Went to the scorecards, he ended up winning the fight. Jay Nady, the referee that worked the fights, saw me a couple events down the road. He said, Stitch, come here. Did you do what I thought you did? 
did you open that cut in front of the doctor? I said, I did. He goes, that was ingenious. But that's knowing more than just going out there and wrapping hands and working twirling is you have to know the whole industry. Years later, I'm leaving the Wembley Stadium, uh, Vladimir's last fight with Anthony Joshua. I'm saying goodbye to Vitaly and he puts his hand on my shoulder. He's like 6'9". He says, Stish, we've been together many, many years. I love you. You are like family. You are always welcome to my house. Those were the final words I said with Vitaly. And, you know, now he's the mayor of Kiev and, you know, they're fighting against Russia. And as a matter of fact, this wrist wrap here, I did it in the colors of the Ukraine in support of, of my two brothers. Mike Tyson, you know, great guy. I interviewed Mike like a week before he got his tattoo. And I said, Mike, every fighter has that one little thing that nobody has. What's that one little thing? This is what I tell young fighters. Mike says very simply, he goes, take the pain. You have to take the pain. And as I left, I thought, man, he's so right because you take a pain in training, you take pain in a fight, you take pain with your family, you take pain financially. But, you know, you go into the scenario of Mike in Tokyo when he fought Buster Douglas and how important a good corner is, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's extremely important, and this was a good example. He gets dropped by uh, Buster Douglas, but they don't have an end swell. They don't have uh, ice packs. I think they put ice in a, in a rubber glove, and that just kind of shows the caliber of guys that work with Mike Tyson. There was no reason for Mike Tyson to have gone through those situations with not having a cut man. I don't know if it's economics, but at this level, at the A level, everything should be understood on the highest probabilities to give that fighter a chance to win a fight. That didn't happen with Mike Tyson. Tyson Fury, uh, thank God I ended up working with him a couple of fights and what a pleasure, but Jorge Capetillo was the cut man that was working on Tyson Fury and in all reality, he's not really a cut man. He would just put that position, but you know, he's a friend of mine. In preparation for his next fight with Deontay Wilder, he told Bob Arum and top rank in Tyson Fury that get Stitch because Stitch is better as a cut man than me. But once I get into the dressing room with Tyson Fury, I walk into top rank. I'm looking at his cut and I'm telling him what I'm gonna do in preparation. I'll keep ice on you every round. And I look at him and I say, you know, Tyson, I also work with sponsors. Do you mind if I make an outfit with the same colors that you have and put my sponsors on them? He puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Stitch, you can do whatever you want. As long as there's no drugs, alcohol, or gambling. That's the Tyson Fury I know. And I have great pictures on the last fight with Deontay Wilder, the last one. I'm in the dressing room and he just has his shorts on. We're, I'm ready to go and I'm saying goodbye. And once again, thanks for keeping eyes on me. Give me a kiss as I love you, you know. I'm talking about some of the bloodiest fights that I've ever worked. You know, at my coming out party in Las Vegas as a cut man was Raul Marcus when he fought Keith Mullins. Raul was the IBF middleweight champion. He ended up with two cuts here, two cuts here, and one here. So I have to determine what are the priority cuts. You know, obviously these two are the most important. This one's gonna bleed, but it's not dangerous. And it continues to bleed because there's nothing but cartilage there. And then the ones down here, you know, they're gonna bleed, but it's not gonna be a disadvantage to the fighter. These you gotta take care of right away. I kept him in the game. He ended up defending his world title. And that was when these people in Las Vegas said, dang, who is this guy? But they didn't know that I had a lot of practice in kickboxing. Kickboxers get cut also. So that was my welcoming fight uh, in Las Vegas and was with Raul until he retired. I started working with my man here, Badu Jack. After he got this cut, he ended up with that big old cut right there and he just bled and bled and bled. And, you know, unfortunately, the cut man at that point didn't know what to do. I would have stopped the fight immediately like I did with Vladimir Klitschko. Number one, I don't think he was winning the fight. It would give him negotiating powers for a rematch because it was an unintentional headbutt. There's really no preparation in preparing a fighter not to get cut outside of defense. You know, working on defense. One of the epic things that I love about working with these great fighters is that deep inside I know, we know, that they're all modern day gladiators but I know that they're babies and my job is to take care of the baby. People always ask me, what do you tell these guys? You know, when I whisper to them, well, I tell them, I say, look, man, don't worry about nothing. I'm here to take care of you. I love you, you know, go out there. You know, they're all my babies. <laughs>